Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, we're gonna teach Thomas how to take and forge his very own frying pan. So hope you guys will enjoy this video and I'll share some tips along the way. Okie doke, so first things first, before we get started, uh, there's a few tools that are needed uh, to make the frying skillets with this particular method. So one of those first tools that you'll wanna have on hand is you'll need a hammer of some kind to take and hit your top tooling with. I prefer a soft face hammer to actually strike my top tools with, um, but if you don't have that, you can just have a softened uh, top tool to use under a regular hand hammer. So we've got one of those right there. The next thing you'll need is a set hammer and a set hammer that has a radius on one edge. That really helps out prevent galling and things like that. You'll see when we get into this here in just a little bit what I mean about that. Then you're gonna need yourself a blank of some kind. Now you could cut this out from a piece of sheet steel yourself. You could purchase this. Uh, we do sell these over our website at blacksmithingblanks.com so you can go check those out over there. Uh, but you will need yourself a circle obviously that is flat uh, of some kind of material in order to take and make a skillet from you'll need a handle material you'll need some handle material this can be anything this is just a pre-cut blank um, to make the forging of the handle quicker and more efficient for sales and then you'll need a couple rivets to take and throw that on now as far as layout goes all the layout that has to be done can be done with a pair of dividers uh, or compasses if you will and the main thing is to figure out how wide you want your rim to be and then we'll take that set it up with the dividers just like so and go around the edge of the plate to give us an inner circle and I don't know if the camera can see that there or not but there's, we've already scribed out a line. We wanna make that line deep enough in order to see in the fire because we're going to follow that on around with our set hammer. So, now that you know what you need there, as far as tooling is concerned, uh, I, in fact, I forgot the most important tool at all. For this method, you need not a swedge block, but you need a depression underneath your blow. So you need some form of hollowed space underneath your hammer uh, work in order to raise this lip up. So that's the only other requirement. That could be a bit of pipe, that could be anything that's hollow in form that gives you a space underneath, underneath the plate in order for your metal to flow too. So, all right, let's get started, Thomas. I do is we want to work back towards ourselves now. So find that line and then work back to this amount there. There you go. Okay, now that Thomas has that bottom started in nicely, now he's gonna come along and really give it the beans to make it go even more. Hold up. You can use this hammer to push, push it around if you need to, right. to get it re-angled. See? Yeah. There you go.
Okay, so Thomas has got this done now. As you can see, the line around the bottom has, in, has really crisped up nicely. And the way that you do that is by doing littler, uh, smaller and smaller steps with each one of your set hammer blows. So at first, on your first go around, you're laying the blows almost right next side one another. And then on the second go around, you're doing them half on top of each other. And then on the third go around, you're putting them, you know, maybe moving it a quarter of an inch at a time as you go around. And that's what really helps to bind that bottom and crisp set up. So now we'll move on to the next stage, which is making sure the rim pops up nicely and is good and even and the bottom is flat. All right, so for this next stage, he's gonna use a wooden mallet, in fact, one that he made for me, to flatten the bottom. I'm just gonna go all the way around the edge, bud. Try to focus close to the edge, there you go. Now, if you don't have an anvil that has a nice flat top to it, uh, any chunk of steel that is flat that you can hammer this against will help out in this process. All right, that's good. Don't want to hammer on it too much there. Now go ahead and grab the rawhide mallet. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually work this. We're going to work this edge right on around. Because see how there's a little bump in there? Uh -huh. That's what we're straightening out. And when we straighten out that bump, our edge pops up. See? Yeah. See how the edge goes up nicer? Yeah. Ugh. this grip just right. So that's all we're doing is straightening out that edge. So we'll take another heat, okay, and go around that again. Okay. You want to make sure that that makes contact or even stood up this way a little bit, okay? Otherwise you're going to hammer out that bit. Does that make sense? Yeah. reposition your grip. You need to do more in that area. All right, now what we're doing for our handle material is we're trying to take and forge in more of a nice, uh, more of a pleasant curvature to this here. So you straighten her out there, good. Now flip it that way and work this edge. There you go. So we're just trying to get a little bit extra curve to it and get, stretch that handle out a longer. And you see how you've got a bit of a shoulder here? Yeah. Work that into the rest. So you yeah, want that to have a nice clean curve. So pull it back into yourself, there you go. Just working those curvatures. Yeah. Good. Get it hot again. Okay, now we're going to work on the eye portion and work it into the rest of the transition of the handle. Starting with a pre-cut blank for this makes this job way, way easier. Many years ago I used to have to, I, I would forge this out from some quarter inch by one inch and then I would have to 
slit and drift an oval into the eye for the handle and uh, that would just take so much longer to do versus having a pre-cut blank that you can start with. Uh, I, I can't tell you how much of a time savings that is. And it gives you quite a bit of regularity to your work. Okay, so hopefully you can see the difference here. So this was the original blank that we started with, and now with just some light hammer work, we have converted that into a nicely looking forged blank, uh, which looks really, really premium. Uh, so that's what, we, that's what we want to do. The other benefit of doing this as well is you get all the irregularity that comes with forging into the piece that gives it that hand forged uh, uh, look because it is hand forged versus if you just leave it like that it'll have more of a manufactured or standard look so that's what we're wanting not that this is just the start so we can get to this point here all right for this next step thomas is going to bring out the hand handle material and we're going to support it on the step of our anvil here turn it a little bit more rotate your wrist there you go now hammer it right in there and we are going to slightly concave this surface rotate it there you go now we're using the step of the anvil here just because not everyone has swedge blocks if you have a swedge block that's the preferred method to do the cupping of the handle material or you can leave your handle material flat whatever strikes your fancy all right now iron it out straighten it so lay it dome side up there you go just give it a light tap get it straightened in line give it a whack there you go down here nope get that up on the anvil there you go now hit it flip it over there's see how there's a crease running that way smack it you just want to get this straight now hit this edge because there's a little twist in it there you go now we'll get it hot again and you'll work that one more time okay now we're just giving it a slight bit of curve and that's probably good enough there Thomas go ahead and brush it heavy That looks so nice, so nice. Flip it, brush the interior. Awesome, sweetness. So now we're gonna check this against our pan. Our pan has thoroughly cooled down nicely and it sits nice and flush on the anvil. Hold it at an angle so they can see there. All right, so that looks really nice. Now you can adjust your handles however you like. Um, this here might, we might curve it a bit more in this department here, just to bring it down a little bit, but be cautious of laying it out completely flat. If it's a flat handle, if you're on a gas burner for a wood stove, for a stove, your handle, your hand can end up raking on those hot burners. So that's why we have it up at a nice angle so that way it's just a little bit better and more ergonomic and you're not roasting your knuckles by accident so but that that's looking really really good so the next step we'll need to take and drill some holes drill some holes and attach the handle oh get out so thomas has got his hole drilled in here and we've got a clamp holding it where it looks where the handle is mostly square uh, in line like it should be. So now what we're going to do is we're going to insert a rivet through here and take this clamp off and we're going to set one side first. Whenever two holes, two holes are to be riveted and they're real close together, if you just rivet up one, what happens is that material around that hole stretches and therefore moves your second hole location. So it's always good to get your first rivet in first get it set so this way this is attached and you don't need this anymore and then you get it nice and squared up 
drill your second hole and get your second rivet attached. So let's go ahead and do that now, Thomas. Get it up on the anvil surface. Press down. Go for it. Whoa. All right, so now that, show that off to the camera there. So as you guys can see there, that's attached now. Now you can drill the next hole and we can put in the final rivet after a little bit of squaring up, making sure that handle is exactly where it needs to be and it's sitting pretty. I'll set it on there. Make sure just that rivet is on the anvil. Now you can probably hold it by the pan. It'll be in good shape. Nope. Don't let it fall off that edge because then you'll get a big mar mark in there. Okay. So just keep it right up there where it needs to be. Harder. Good. Good. Now Don't flip it. Even. And there we are. So now that is all nicely attached. The uh, rivets and the handle, and it's nice and square. It looks good. Now the next stage in this is to clean all this up multiple ways of doing it. You can pickle it and then you can remove all the scale that way and then just wire wheel it. You can sand these, you can polish them, you can do a lot of different things with them. For our purposes and what I'm going to be selling in, the, uh, in my shop uh, with Thomas, we're going to leave it somewhat more of the rustic look, give it more of that earthy feel to it. So we'll clean up this handle and everything, but we are going to pickle it and wire wheel it and get it ready for seasoning. So we'll be back with you and show the seasoning step here in just a few minutes and we'll get it done. Okay, everybody, so here you are. Uh, Thomas got this all wire wheeled up nice and clean. Roll it around, Thomas, show him. He's taken off any hot spots that may be on the handle. Uh, you just rub your hand across it, make sure it doesn't have any roughness to it. That way it feels pleasant in the hand to use. And uh, that is ready now for seasoning. What we're gonna use for seasoning is we're just gonna use your box standard vegetable oil. Uh, you can get anywhere, any of your big box stores, grocery stores should have this. We're gonna use this and some blue paper towels uh, to take and actually oil this pan up and season it. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do now. He's gonna go ahead and get it hot in the gas forge. If you've got a coal forge, you can do it in a coal forge, or if you've got a wide open gas forge, you can do this in a gas forge. Okay, so we definitely don't wanna get over, we definitely don't wanna get any color in the pan. This is about what we're talking here. We want it to have a nice dark finish to it, um, where it's just starting to heat up, but we don't want to take this up to a point where it's got red in it. If it turns red, we've went too far with it, um, and you know you're going to get a scorching. It's going to scorch in one area and not really uh, go well the other way. So just set it on the swedge block for right now. Let her cool down, and then we'll add a little bit of oil to the pan and go ahead and rub that around there, Thomas. Make sure you get all ends of it. It's good to be in a well-ventilated space when you do this as well. That way you don't die. <laughs> That's always preferable. Go ahead and rub that down more, bud, all the way around. We'll be cooking flat iron steaks in that in no time, huh?
roll it over and wipe it off on the bottom. Just flip it over, it'll self extinguish. Rub that bottom down. Okie doke, and there you have it folks. A really nice seasoned pan. It's got a really nice dark finish to it. If you flip it over, bud, it's got a really nice dark finish to the back. Now the handle itself, you could do, uh, I just lightly treat that with oil. And uh, you know, it's good to have a bit of contrast from the pan, a little bit of a contrast break. One other thing that might be done with this later might actually heat that, heat that handle up a bit more and then rub a little brass finish on it uh, just to give it that little extra pop. But there you have it. That's how you make a skillet. Now again, if you're interested in buying the blanks that this was made from, you can get those over at our website, blacksmithingblanks.com. Uh, you know, we sell a whole range from 8 inch, 10 inch, and 12 inch skillet blanks with handles and spatulas and ladles and you name it. Um, and you can buy it as a whole complete kit, just like you see it here. So that's it for today. God bless each and every last one of you. Thank you to all the channel members that make this content possible. And we will catch you all on the next one.